Then the next part that we are going to take a look at will be the top part, the Orion unit. Um, you can just keep your calculator like it is, but you might like to press the on button because I think it's a pretty sure bet that it's going to announce automatic power down in a second. So just press on once and that will keep it happy. Okay, <laughs> so let's look at the very top of the calculator. And the tricky part about this is with my description, it's very helpful if you're familiar with Braille because the way that we normally describe the six keys that you see at the top on the left half is we say, oh, it looks just like a Braille cell. It does. There are three keys in a column on the left, and then there are three keys in a column right next to it on the right. And it is shaped like a Braille cell. And so if a student is a Braille reader, I can say to them dot one, dot two, dot three, four, five, and six, and they know immediately what I'm talking about. And it's not quite that simple if I'm talking to a student who is not a Braille reader. But I will call them one, two, three, and four, five, six. But I also may refer to them as top on the left, top on the right, you know, the middle one on the left, the middle one on the right, the bottom one on the left, the bottom one on the right, because that's correct too. And we could all use that description. So we'll see what I end up saying. All right. Those six keys are used for some of the basic controls in the way that your calculator is going to talk to you. Okay. So I think what we want to do is let's enter a number and let's just do something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have a nice long number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Okay. Um, now, if you will go up to your braille cell and find <laughs> dot one or the top one on the left, press that. Nine. What did it say? Nine. nine. Yeah, it just said nine. It repeated just one digit of what you've written. Press your enter key. Remember how we entered one, two, three, four, press seven, eight, nine. All right, that's one hundred twenty-three million. Now press that very same dot one. Can you figure out what that key is for? It's repeat the it's, last thing you did. That's exactly right. Excellent. It repeats whatever was said last. In fact, if you pushed it again, it would say that whole thing over and over. Right. <laughs> in a minute I'll show you how to make it stop talking because at times you are ready for it not to repeat these long numbers. Let's talk about how to make it louder and not so loud. All right, again, look at those six keys in the Braille cell. This, the ones in the middle, which would be dot two and dot five, are quieter and louder. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do, in other words, we're just going to experiment Press dot one to make it talk, and then while it's talking, play around with dot two and dot five. Go ahead and press dot one so that it's talking. Okay, now press, come over on this side and press dot five. I accidentally cleared everything. <laughs> That's all right. You can re you can re-enter your one, two, three, four, five, six if you like. Okay. That's it. Oh, my. <laughs> Imagine a classroom where everyone had one of these calculators. All right. Would the students sitting around you like you to turn your volume up? No, I don't know. I'm not so sure. They might like to hear somebody else's <laughs> answers. All right. Um, we will not be using, you know, little earplugs in here, but you can use earplugs on your calculator so that only you hear your work. All right. So set your volume by pressing dot two or dot five to one that's comfortable for you, but maybe not too loud so that the folks, you know, on the other side of the room hear it. Okay. All right. Now, dot three, which is the bottom one on the left. That's it. Very good. Dot three is called the control key, just like a control key on a computer keyboard. It doesn't control a lot. But if you press, <laughs> if you press dot three and hold it down while you press either dot two or dot five, 
it will slow down or speed up your voice. So again, get it, you know, play around with dot two and five while you're holding the control key. <laughs> oh, that's really fun. I think it goes up to 16, but I'm not sure. No. Oh, it's going even, even faster. All right. <laughs> you know, some students who are accustomed to listening to computers talk are really fast listeners. Um, they can play it at faster speeds than I can understand. All right. So find a speed that you like. And remember, you're going to want to hear these numbers accurately. So don't set it for so fast that you can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Speed 87. All right. So what do you have? We have volume and we have rate. And you know how to make it repeat, right? Yes. All right. So now, the next two things I want to talk about are two different ways to make your calculator be quiet. All right, uh, we've got a long number entered. And sometimes if you're sitting in the class or, or, or you're at home and, and your calculator is just talking, 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 and somebody wants to, somebody comes up to you and they need to speak to you, you want it to be quiet, but you don't necessarily want it to forget what it's saying because you're going to come back to it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, in the Braille cell, the key that we just identified as the control key, dot three, by itself can be used to pause speech like pause. Jaws. and then it, it's like a toggle switch the first time you press dot three it pauses and waits politely while you have your conversation <laughs> then you press that very same key again and it will finish what it was saying so try that you press dot one so that it's reading that long number and then do three got to press dot one first so oh whoops there you go. <laughs> Oh, wait, if, if it is, it's repeating the last speed that you did, I'm sorry. Let's go, um, press the enter key, press the enter key. All right, now you can use repeat after that. You can interrupt it and it will stop, <laughs> and then when you press that very same key again, what does it do? It finishes right off where it's It finishes. Now, I don't know that I would necessarily remember what it had said to me before I paused it, but that's the idea. You, you don't lose the whole thing with dot three. Now, maybe you actually want it to stop. Maybe you don't want to hear this at all ever again. In this case, it's not dot three, but the one right next to it on the other side. Dot six. Good. All right, everybody's got it. This is the mute key. And it works just like dot three to make it be quiet, but if you push it again, it will not finish what it was saying. It's done, okay? So make your calculator talk, and that should work by pressing dot one, and then just try dot six. Oh, my goodness, the silence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what happened? Well, what happened is everyone pressed dot six, and so the calculators are being very, very quiet, all right? If uh, you were not supposed to use your calculator for a certain activity and you looked up and realized the teacher was coming, you would hit dot six <laughs> right away, and it would be, it would be very hard. Uh, okay, good. Um, do you think you understand the difference between these two? Yes. They yeah. both yeah. tell it. They both turn the voice off. One, finishes, one of them. One doesn't. That's right. Now, what if you press the wrong one? I mean, this is not a major problem. Go back and press dot one, and it will repeat. You know whatever it was saying. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, another thing that I want us to look at on the Orion unit is we've looked at the Braille cell and we'll learn more about it, but let's look at why, my goodness, there's another set of navigation keys, and that's on the right hand side. This one has an extra button. You'll see that there's one that would be up, there's one for down, there's one for moving to the left, one for moving to the right. There's also one in the middle, and the one in the middle is called the home button. And we're going to use that when we set preferences on the calculator. We're not going to do preferences right now, but I just want you to know that that's the home button. 
Um, why do we have two sets of navigation keys? I mean, the TI-84. One's for the Orion part, and one's for the actual calculator. One's for the talking part, one's for the actual calculation. That's exactly right. The beauty of it is if we use the TI navigation keys, the one that's down on the bottom, that actually moves the cursor up into former work and brings the cursor back down. Moves it left, moves it right, and could end up in the middle of a problem. And then if you began to type from there, you'd be typing in the middle of your problem, which you may or may not want to do. <laughs> the navigation keys on the Orion part only move, it's kind of like it moves the voice around. And it will allow the calculator to read things to you on previous lines without moving the cursor for the Texas Instruments mm -hmm. part. And that can be very useful. You may just want to go back and say, what did I, what did I do? You can't glance at it, but you can send your Orion unit back to look at it and tell you what was up there. All right. Um, up, down, left, right, and home. No problem there, right? Right. Okay.